Yo, yo. Thank y'all so much. What's up, online audience? Welcome to Go Epic Wednesday. Come on. That means we're going to go experience power in Christ. Go Epic Wednesday. Your life will be changed, and we're so excited for all the young people who are streaming live. Come on, young people. Stand up and make some noise for Epic Global. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, camera. Let's get them. Come on, clap them up. Check it out. Let's switch to that camera. What's up, young people? Make some noise for Epic Global. So that camera represents all the teenagers online who are watching right now live and they're watching with us. Come on, move that table a little closer. I'm excited about this Wednesday. Let me tell you why real quick, the whole table. Let me tell you why I'm excited about this Wednesday. This is night one of our three-week revival. Someone say night one, week one. Night one, week one. Night one, week one. All right, y'all make some noise for all the youth workers real quick. Come on. All the youth workers, yeah. All right, youth workers, make some noise for all the students. Yeah. Make some noise for all the students. Praise God. You may have your seats. All right, cool. Man, shout out to all the students who uh, you gave a back to school seed during the month of August. And I was praying about this and thinking about this. You can do this during the month of September as well because we're, we're going into our youth revival. And I want to let you know that you can do this anytime you want. Anytime, I want to encourage you during this month as you're going back to school, anytime you feel led to sow a seed, you can do that. And that's for the students who know what I'm talking about. For any student online or any first-time guest and you're new to this culture, we'll explain more about that. You can ask any of our youth workers uh, anybody you see in an epic shirt or an epic lanyard, they should have a lanyard on or an epic shirt. That's, that's what we call our student specialist team, all right? So I want to thank y'all so much. I'm so excited to see you teenagers. I'm talking about what God wants me to say to you all. And let's dig into the word. You ready? Let's pray. Hands up in the air. Let's pray. Here we go. Father God, we thank you for tonight, God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. That you're with us on this journey. Anoint us right now to deposit what you want deposited in your teenagers, grow what you want grown in these young people. Your word says some men plant, some men water, but you bring the increase. God, I'm going to do my job knowing that you're already done your job. Thank you for the increase in the lives of these teenagers, the change in the lives of these teenagers, and furthermore, the favor. And God, I thank you that they're covered, they're protected, and nothing by any means shall hurt them. Nothing by any means shall hurt them. Amen, amen. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. I want you to repeat after me real quick. Say this. Say, nothing by any means shall hurt me. Go ahead. Say it again. Nothing by any means shall hurt me. Say, nothing by any means shall hurt me. Come on. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, my name is Chandler Bailey. For everybody online who doesn't know, I get to be the youth pastor of this glorious, awesome group called Epic Student Ministries. We call you all Epic Global, your students who are experiencing power in Christ, and we're just thankful that you joined us and you're hanging out with us. So just for you online, we already know what this is called here. It's called Go Epic Wednesday. It's a night where we experience power in Christ on a Wednesday. We're going. We're declaring that we're moving forward with what God's saying, and this is night one to our revival. We declare this to be a revival, y'all. We declare that God's going to do some great things in your life, and we declare this night to be a revival. What does a revival mean? A revival means a reinvigoration. It means going back to being excited about the things of God, not just emotional, but excited. Bishop and Dr. Marshall are doing a series. On, my parents are doing a series in the, in the main sanctuary called Keeping Our Passion for God. And you as a young person, you can stay passionate for the things of God. You don't have to wait till you get old where you need God in your body because you, you have a sickness or, you, or, or life hits you. You can be passionate for God without anything going wrong in your life. So I challenge you online, and I challenge everyone in here right now. Don't be distracted by your phones. Use them as a tool, but don't let them rule. Y'all heard me on Sunday. You saw it on you Sunday. We talked about being unplugged. I need every young person to intentionally, I'm not going to be up here that long, for 15 minutes, say, guess what? I'm not talking to nobody on my phone unless I'm sharing the YouTube link. I'm, not, I'm taking notes, I'm paying attention, and I'm going to grow. I want to talk to you from the subject, it is so. But before I go to it is so, young people, check this out. This series for the revival, and for three weeks, our series strategy is this. It's spiritually practically possible. Ah! It's spiritually practically possible. And y'all, wifey going to be speaking. Audrey is going to be talking to y'all too. But it's spiritually practically possible. Can you... 
All right, I want you to grab your hands on this. So what do I mean when I say that? Many times when God gives you an idea, it comes to you spirit to spirit. And what happens is we ask ourselves, Andrea, how do I take that which God gave me in my spirit, Gabby, and how do I trust and make what spirit become on the outside of me? Like, I know in my heart God wants to use me. I know, Venetia, God wants to use me in my heart. I know spiritually God has plans for me. But how do I make this practical? And then after I make it practical, now I get scared, Angelica, because I realize it's going to cost a lot of money for me to record an album. It's going to cost a lot of money for me to work on my dreams. I don't have all the relationships. I understand what God needs to do in my life as a young person. It's going to take practicality. That means things to line up in my life. But how is this possible? But God says this. It is spiritually, practically possible. Don't be scared when you find out what's needed and necessary for you to go to your next level as a young person. Don't be worried about it. God said it's possible. Someone say it is possible. It is possible. So everything you know that needs to be done for you to go to your next level, God's saying is spiritually, practically possible. So this, the title of the subject for part one is this. It is so. Someone say it is so. If you say so. Come on, say someone say trust the if you say so. If you say so. And I'm declaring it is so tonight. It is so to if you say so. If God said that you're the head and not the tail, guess what? I'm trusting if he said so. I'm saying it is so. I'm declaring that whatever God said about my life, it is so, Denicia. If God says I'm the apple of his eye, tell you, it is so. If he said it, then he's going to finish it. Someone just make some noise right now for Jesus because you know he's going to finish it in your life. Come on. Do you believe that? Come on online, do you believe that? God is going to finish that which he started in your life. Come on, Alvin, he's going to finish it. If us as you works can go back to the times where we got stuck in something, right, Benice? We got stuck in something where we did not know God was going to bring us through it. But God brought us through it. Now check this out. We, it didn't happen on our time. It didn't happen in, on our terms. But somehow, some way, it's a mystery, right? We made it out of that season. We made it out of that breakup. We made it out of the dysfunctional relationship. We made it out of that daddy leaving our life. Come on. We made it out of that teacher who stereotyped us. We, I made it out of being expelled. I made it out of jail. God's saying, if you trust that if he said so, God said it, he will finish it. Someone say, God, I trust you that you will finish it. Why am I acting so hype? I'm acting so hype because I believe it's revival. It's time to yield to the Lord. Ah. It's time to yield to the Lord. It doesn't mean I have to stop doing. It just means I have to pay attention to what's happening around me while I'm doing it. But while I'm turning right, I got to pay attention to the motion that's going on in my life. Sometimes we get distracted with the motion. When I yield, I'm not distracted to, I'm not distracted to tell you what's happening over there. I'm yielding to the oncom oncoming traffic to the direction God is taking me. Someone say, God, you're taking me places, and I will yield to the Lord. God, what are you saying about dating? Am I too young? I'll yield to it. God, what are you saying about how much money does it take to go to college? What are you saying? I'll yield to it. God, what are you saying about my attitude when I step into the house of God and I don't feel like praise you because I feel down? I'll yield to it. I'm going to yield to the Lord. It's so important that we do that. Someone give God a praise for that. Come on, it's revival. Give him a praise. I'm yielding. To the Lord. Amen. Amen. So it is so. So what does it is so mean? Well, let's look at Zechariah 4 and 6. This is our foundational scripture, Azariah, for our series. And it says this. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord. Ooh, dope media. Y'all make some noise for media. Ah! So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Oh, media, when I do that, go ahead and give him the horn on the screen real quick. Give him the horn, give him the horn, give him the horn, give him the horn, give him the horn. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, ay, not by power, ay, but by the spirit. Ooh, let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Not by might, ay, not by power, ay, but by spirit. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. There it is. Not by might, ay, not by power, ay, but by the spirit. Yeah. Ah! Not by might, eh, not by power, eh, but by the spirit, eh, spirit, spirit, spirit. not by power, eh, not by might, eh, but by the spirit, yeah. Not by might, not by power, but by the spirit, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Not by my bank account? No. Mm. no, no. By the money? No. no. By my outfit? No. no. By how many dudes in school like me? No. no. But by the spirit? Yeah. No. Ah! But by the spirit? Yeah. No. But by the spirit? Yeah. yeah. Come on, MJ. But by the spirit? Yeah. One more time. Not by power, nah. Not by might, yeah. But by the spirit, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, stop, stop. Huh? All right, calm down. Zechariah 4, <laughs> 1 through 6 says, So he said to me, This is the word of the Lord of Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit, says the Lord Almighty in Isia. Check this out. Then he said to me, This is what the word of the Lord said. This is New Living Translation. It is not by force. I don't have to force myself to go to Clemson. I don't have to force myself to go to USC. I don't have to force myself to get a job. I don't have to force myself to be cool. I don't have to force myself to be popular. It's not by force, nor by strength. I don't have to be strong. I don't got to be tough. I don't got to be hard. I already know if you slap me, I'm smacking the fire at you. Why well, I got a mean mug you? I can smile and, and whip your tail at the same time. Like, I don't have to be hard. Like, I, I know who I am in Christ, and you're going to know who I am in life. I'm, I'm talking to that teenager. Listen, you may not be called to fight, but you are called to defend yourself. I'm going to say that right now. You are called to defend yourself. And look, there's administrators. I don't know. Let's just go here. I don't know who's dealing with what, who's dealing with what online. Maybe somebody's dealing with some stuff in school. You are called to defend yourself. Don't you back down because they're mad at you because you don't want to co-sign on their foolishness. You stand up for who you are in Christ. This is revival. Come back to yourself. You don't got to fit in and look cool. If they don't like your hair, so what? You like your hair. If they don't like your skin color, you know what's up. So what? You like your skin color. Don't you let nobody, your life matters. Come on. Don't you let nobody try you. You can stand, you can love the Lord and still poke your chest out. Come on, fellas, what's up? You can love Jesus and still stand up for, uh, I don't want you cussing around my mama. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you doing this on my front yard. Or no, I, I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to do this with you. It's time for you to stand up. Someone say revival. So revival. And it's okay. And Zechariah 4, Zechariah 4, 1 through 6 is your homework. I want you to read chapter 1 through 6. That is your homework for tonight. And I'm not going to read that tonight. But I want to say this real quick. My first point is this. It's time to believe God like you never did before. Come on, like you never did. Get, put the word of God to the test. Put the word of God to the test. It's time to believe God like you ne never did before. What do I mean by that? This is what I mean by this as a youth pastor. It's time for teenagers to go to another level in their faith. It's time for you as a young person to believe MJ like you never did before. Come on, Gabby. What's five figures? What's six figures? What's seven figures? What if God wants to do some billion dollar stuff in your last name? It is time to get ready. Get ready for God to maximize you. Some young person say, God, maximize me maximize me, maximize me. Why am I here? What do you want to do? I don't want to, Lord, I don't want to wait till I get older to be used. Maximize me now. Since things have been crazy in the earth, since things have been wild, it's time to believe God like never before. Here we go, young person, here we go. What ideas, what ideas is God trying to break off in your life, Epic Global? It's time for your faith to go to the next level as a young person. But you have to believe God like you never did before because it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the spirit. And you cannot allow anybody who's trying to be mighty in school, who's trying to be powerful in manipulation. Listen, you don't need none of that for God to use you. All you need is a spirit relationship with God. All you need is to focus on what God can do in your life by the spirit. Since it's revival, while you're in your seat, no judgment zone. You can just say hallelujah and worship God where you're at. But for those young people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, I dare you right now just to pray in your heavenly language and download some ideas and download some next level. I dare you while your mask is on or mask is off, they're just praying your heavenly language and say, God, send a revival in me. Revive me with ideas. Revive my trait. Come on. Pray in your heavenly language right now, wherever you are. What are you doing right now as a teenager? You're downloading information. You're downloading ideas. You're downloading a fresh wave of beliefs that God's giving you. Come on, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Keep praying. Because it's not by might. And it's not by power. 
It'll be by the Spirit. It's time for me to believe God, tell you, like I never did before. And I can't do that by myself. I need the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, let's go G mode on them. I need the Holy Ghost. Let's go G. The Holy Ghost is a G. The Holy Spirit is real nice. Hi, I'm here to help you. Hi, don't do that. Sometimes you need the gangster version of the Holy Spirit. And the G says, hey, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hang up your phone. <laughs> Hold up, hold up, hold up. Why are you being friends with them? You know I already revealed to you that they talk junk behind your back. Come on. Has the Holy Spirit ever told you who's fake and who's real? Has the Holy, can you just be thankful for the Holy Ghost? Let you know stuff before they even knew that you knew it? Come on. That's what you need. He was 11 and 1 says this. It says, now faith is the substance. Why should I believe God like I never believed God before? Because it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence for, of things for teenagers not seen, things for teens not seen, things for, thi thi things for teens not seen. Say that, put this down in your notebook right now, young person. God has things for the young people. Come on, say it. Let's say it together. Say, God has some things for the young people. Come on, man. Some things reserved. Reserve things for you. There's some stuff that y'all are supposed to get by spirit that older people can't get. There's some stuff that you're supposed to get. Listen, don't wait to get older to try to get it because this is called, it's called to you being 16. It's called to you being 18. It's called to you being 19. It's called to you being 12. There's some things you're supposed to do and God placed it in your life and you got to get it done. You got to get it done. Now, listen, I'm going to prophesy real quick. Sometimes we as parents, we're stalling. Pay attention to me, young person, right now. Listen, pay attention. Every young person, pay attention to me right now. Listen, sometimes as parents, we accidentally are stalling because we're handling life. I'm giving you information. But God placed something in your spirit. And what happens is your mom or your dad may say no. It's not no to your destiny. In their mind, it's just no, not right now. But if God's giving you an idea, my God, if God's giving you something as a young person that you got to get done, like you're supposed to be acting, you're supposed to be modeling, you're supposed to, you get it done with a cell phone. You don't wait for no contract. You get it done with a friend's phone. You, don't, you do what you can do with what you have. Because God says this, before you have a record deal, I'm giving you an Instagram deal. Before you have a platform, I'm giving you a pulpit. You serve that gift wherever God gives you access. Don't wait for the big day. Do it every day. God wants to give you something to do as a young person, but you got to get it done. And listen, here, here it is. God wants to raise up some young people, James. He wants to raise up some young people that can share their gifts with the world even when it feels like their parents don't support them. Y'all ain't want to follow me right now. This is revival. Listen, listen. I said feel because we do support you, but sometimes we're so busy doing other things. But God wants you to do what you're supposed to do for the Lord. He gave you that idea. Don't you wait on mama. Now, you respect mama. You don't disrespect. You don't go around your parents. You don't do something you shouldn't do. But ask the Lord, how can I creatively share this with my parents of what I'm trying to do? Well, God, they're bringing up money. How can I creatively get the money? How do I do this? How do I do that? Because there's some ideas in you. I see it right now. Even those who are standing, there's some ideas in you. There's some dreams in you. And you allow somebody's grown no to stop your young yes. You allow someone's grown no that stop your, stop your young yes, and God is looking for a young yes. Gideon, Gideon, Gideon. Gideon wasn't the greatest in his, in, in his region. Gideon was not just, not only was Gideon the, the weakest in his region, he was, he was part of the weakest tribe. Not only was he part of the weakest tribe, he was the weakest one in the weakest tribe. And he came from the weakest family and the weakest tribe. But God chose him because his strength is made perfect in weakness. God is saying this to you, young person, right now on this Revival Wednesday. God is saying, if you would get, get, come back to me with your yes. Even tonight, God's saying, renew your yes. What did you say yes to at first? You were so excited to do it, but something came up. Your parents didn't have enough money, or you found out that it was harder than what you thought it was going to be, or you found out you wasn't old enough. What is God saying to you now? How can you still get it done? What are you supposed to be doing? Who, who are you supposed to be teaming up with? Don't you allow a season that looks like a no become a season that becomes a no. You got to learn how to push through opposition. That's what this revival is about. Someone say, it is so. Someone say, if you say so. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 says this. For all the promises of God in him are yes. I want you to see that. Look at the last one. I want everyone to read it. Here we go. Read. If you're inside the auditorium right now, read 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. 1, 2, 3, go. Through us, 
in him. It said in him twice, Sade. The reason why I said in him twice, he wants you to understand it's not in the president. He wants you to understand it's not in the governor. He wants you to understand it's not in the teachers. He wants you to understand it's not in the scholarship. He wants you to understand it's not in your mama. It's not in your dad. It's not in kissing up to nobody. It's not in being, it's not in being loyal and being cool to fake friends. I feel that right now in the realm of spirit. God's going to deliver you this school year from fake people. My God. No more, no more hooking up with fake people to only cause yourself to get hurt. You've been real with the wrong person. God's saying this, it's in him. The promises are in him. So I don't need you to give me nothing. Look at someone in love, but act like it's an enemy, but don't be too mean. Say, I don't need you to give me nothing. Come on, be bold. Look at someone and say, I don't need you to give me nothing. Point to him. I don't need you to give. It's in him. All his promises, Christian, are all God's promises are in Christ. And then it says in him twice, and it says yes and in him, amen. So in him, yes, my young yes, in him, amen, I agree to the glory of God through us. So it's going to happen through us, but it's going to be in him. That means someone's going to get saved today. Someone's going to get saved today. That's what it means. Because now I realize that there's salvation ahead. May not be a boyfriend ahead, but there's salvation ahead. May not be a girlfriend ahead, but there's salvation ahead. May, I may lose some friends, but there's some salvation ahead. People may not like me for what I stand for, but there's some salvation ahead. Everyone may not understand who, why I do what I do and why I keep going when everybody else wants to give up, but there's some salvation ahead because all the promises of God are in who? Him, Jesus, are yes and amen. Someone say revival. Revival, 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 revival. Secondly, God's no is a yes to something else. You should be praising God right now. You should be praising God right now. God's no, come on. I know, I know I'm, I'm excited for all my, my first-time students real quick. Can we just pause real quick during this sermon? Can we just thank God for all of our first-time students? If you're your first time here, can you wave at me? What's up? I know your people's. Hey, 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 what's up? And if it's your first time, I'm sorry I'm so passionate. It's just God's just got me like lit right now for y'all young people. And I promise you I'm not hyper like this all the time. Don't let me alarm you or scare you. I promise I'm not that too crazy. But here we go. God's no is a yes to something else. God's no is a yes to something else. James, what that means is I can't get so focused on the it that God said no to when he has something else for me to look at. He has something else for me. I got to learn how to grow up as a teenager. I can't be petty with God because God's not being petty with me. He's not playing with his promises. Austin, if he's saying no to the motorcycle, it may mean he has a different motorcycle or a car for me. If he's saying no to this, that means he might have it for me over here. We have to learn to trust God. Someone say, you better trust God. Proverbs 3, 7, and 8, teenager. Come on, word of correction. Someone say, correct me, Lord. Correct me, God. Well, here it comes. Do not be wise in your own eyes, 16-year-old. Do not be wise in your own eyes, 14-year-old. Do not be wise in your own eyes, senior. Old class, 22, lit, we lit, we lit. You lit, but you ain't too smart yet. Okay? It's okay. I love you. I'm lit. I'm excited for you. I'm proud of you. But I'm here to tell you, you're still going to get smarter. Your brain's still growing. So let's be humble before the God. Someone say, Lord, I'm humble. You don't have to humble me because I'm already humble. Here we go. Let's read. If you're humble, let's read Proverbs 3, 7 through 8 together. Here we go. One, two, three. Let's do it, teens. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So while everybody else is doing this, you can tell right now that this is not smart to do. I have the wisdom of Jesus, and I'm not going to do that. Why? Because I'm walking in revival. I'm leaping in revival. I'm chilling in revival. I'm making moves in revival. I'm smart in revival. I'm not letting nothing take away what God's given me. So God's know that something will always lead to some other yes. Stretch your hands towards God right now and say, God, where's the next yes? Uh, so here it is. We can't, we're, we're sometimes in our, in our relationship with God, young people, we're so moved by the no's versus loyal to God's yes. We get so upset, Trisha, when God says no. We get upset when, 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 when our parents say no. We get upset when someone says no. But really, here we go. For now, I want to say no means not right now. It may not mean not, it may not mean, young person, not right never, or not, not forever never. It may mean no right now. You could check this out. God's always going to give you a yes before he tells you a no. He'll never tell you a no without leading you to a yes. And lastly, God's yes is a no to everything else. And this is the part where God's warning you tonight. Because some of you all need to stop. You need to stop. Because God's yes 
is a no to everything else. Come on, let's say this by faith. Even if we don't like it, one, two, three. God's yes is a no to everything else. So if God specifically told you what he wants for your life, you got to stop. You got to stop doing the things that he does not want for your life. You got to stop. How many of y'all walk across with that lady in the vest at school when she has you go across the thing? How many of y'all walk? How many of y'all walk at school? You see that? I, that's what I mean. I saw the, the lady. Anybody see her? See her? Anybody get carpool and you see the lady? Who, who does? Who, who y'all see the people? Raise your hand if you see the lady at school with the whole sign and everything like that. And she'd be like, <laughs> you're supposed to drop them off over here. No! <laughs> It'd be real. I almost got in trouble. I was like, I, I, it's like, it's a scary thing. If you want to pick a Halloween outfit, find a vest that glows, get a sign like this, and just go, Happy Halloween! It's the scariest thing in the world. I'm scared. What do they call these people who help you out across? Huh? Cross guards are scary. Can you imagine a door knock and a cross guard is looking at you like, can you imagine a cross? Hi. Are you trying to go across something? Are you in a cross place right now? I'm here to tell you that you can cross over. Happy Halloween! Jesus loves you! He died on the cross! Ah! He died on the cross! Cross over! Ah! Scariest thing in the world. It was terrifying me. Like, if, you, if my kids know this about me, I get scared of random stuff. Like, it has to be weird. Like, I'm not scared of real stuff. I'm scared of random stuff. So, like, if a goat came out of nowhere right now, I'd be like, I'll look at all y'all first and be like, who's goat? And then I, once I see something, and then if I saw someone in the corner like this, just randomly start going like this, oh, 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 I'll be like, ah! Because somehow I connect the jumping jacks with the random goat and a random person in the back doing jumping jacks. And I'm saying here, like, why did none of you specialists find the person doing jumping jacks? Why is he doing that? And why am I preaching? And I look at the camera, and I'll pitch myself and be like, am I dreaming? Are all y'all real? And I'll take off running. That's the type, believe it or not, I'm sorry, y'all. That's the weird, that's the side of me you don't know. That's the weird, if you want to know what the weird side of PC is, that's the weird side of me. That's the side nobody knows, right? Nobody knows. They're never going to know. Nobody knows. They're not going to know. Nobody knows. So, all right, listen, seriously, back to the Holy Spirit. Stop. Do not set your foot on the path of the wicked, young person, or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way. Proverbs 4, 4 through 15. God's yes is a no to everything else. What is God telling you to say? Here we go. Let's translate God. Here, say this with me. Say, Lord, I translate your no to the word stop. Tonight, God, what do I need to stop? Uh-oh. Do I have to stop cussing under my breath online? Nobody in here. Nobody in here. <laughs> online. It's about to fall into sin. See that quick? It's about to fall into some temptation. How many of you all need to stop cussing under your breath? How many of you all need to, that temper you have? You say stuff, that face you make when your parents ask you to do something? <laughs> y'all be powering. Y'all, I feel the Holy Spirit. Y'all be Goku in your house, Vegeta. Line your shoes up. Put your phone down. Go do your heart. Y'all be getting so upset. All your parents ask you to do is do your homework. That's all they ask you to do. Y'all be turning to Spider-Man and all this type of stuff in the house for no reason. Come downstairs to eat. They just ask you to come downstairs to eat. That's it. Put your plate in the sink. Why are you about to pop? Why are you powering up? Because they actually put the plank in the seat. This is revival for teenagers. And some of you simply need to stop. It's not going to lead you nowhere. Pastor John, now you're supposed to be talking about church stuff with the word revival. Why are you talking about my attitude? Because some of you all need a revival in your emotions. You need the fruits of the spirit to penetrate your cheeks so you can smile better. You can't be saved from the neck down. Your face is always turned down when you're supposed to be turned up. You're supposed to be smiling. So right now, I want to pray for people online right now. I just feel this right now. I want to pray for attitude issues tonight. See how God does stuff? See, he's just be messing y'all up. God's yes and no to everything. Everyone's standing. We're going to dismiss so you can fellowship in a little bit. Some of us need to walk with Jesus. Y'all done ran around the church. <laughs> you done praise. But when's the last time you walked? Listen, when you walk, you have a conversation with the person you're walking with. 
Some of us are too busy trying to live fast for Jesus. That's why you're always huffing and puffing after you finish serving. <sighs> you only know the Jesus of this. This is the only Jesus you know. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And one thing about right direction, all of our hallelujahs are loud. I don't know why. Why are all our, can, can, don't you wish sometimes our church would be like, everyone calm down. Calm down right now. Every time, after, and then look, every time it's like, hallelujah. It's like, wait. Calm down right now. <laughs> nah, we be praised. It's dope. I love my church. But for you teenagers, part of Epic Global, when's the last time you served God? Here we go. When's the last time you served God in a quiet, still way? That's where wisdom comes. Wisdom comes when you walk. You know when you walk, you actually can think. You can process. There's people, those people who go walking in your neighborhood, they're not just walking in your neighborhood because they're like this. No. <laughs> they're walking in your neighborhood. This is a healthy practice. It's therapeutic. Walking is, is healthy to do. It's mentally healthy when you walk. It protects your mind when you walk. And some of you all need to go back to walking with God. What am I saying? Slow down a little bit. Everything doesn't have to be quick. You know what that, Listen, stop rushing to be 14 when God calls you to be 12. Stop, stop rushing to be 16 when God calls you to be 14. Stop rushing to be 18 when God calls you to be 16. Stop rushing to be 21 when God calls you to be 19. Your whole life, I said this before, some of you young people, here's your revival. Your revival starts with accepting your own age. Well, I can't wait to get older. I can't wait to get older. Your whole life you're going to be saying that. If you keep saying, I can't wait to get older, you'll be older saying, I wish I was younger. Trust me, I know. Don't rush your life. You're right where God needs you. You don't have to hurry up nothing. If I put Elijah Warnock on blast right now and had him preach, he'll look at y'all and be like, yo, I promise you PC ain't lying right now. He, he'll tell me, if I can go back to some times, man, I would have did some things differently. You know why? Because that's what you're supposed to do when you're older. God gives you wisdom for your dumb days. When you repent, when you turn away from the things you've done, God gives you. So right now, wherever you are, online, comment below, PC, pray for me. Say, youth workers, pray for me. And I believe we have some Zoom rooms for you all online to touch base with you just to check on you. And we want to take this conversation further and let you know how you can slow down practically where God can provide a mental health strategy for his spiritual guidance in your life. So what I want you to do right now is at Ashley Torres, we end, you'll see a Zoom link. We might have some youth workers available. They just want to chit chat with you, get to know you better, and then you can log off after that and we'll share some more information with you. But um, before we even move forward right now, let's get everybody into Jesus, right? That's before we move on. All right, repeat me. If you're here right now watching online or you're in this building and you never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I didn't say, have you been baptized? I didn't say, did you go to your parents' church? I'm saying, did you ever say this prayer? So here we go. I want you to repeat after me. Don't let the devil trick your mind. I'm not making you say nothing crazy. I'm actually making say, make you say something awesome. Here we go. Repeat after me. Here we go. Lord Jesus. Now, here we go. Let me say this again. You're not saying this with your mind. You're not saying this with your feelings. You're saying this with your faith. You know right now the moment's right. It's called a personal relationship. Well, I feel like saying it this way. I don't know, maybe some, I don't, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but if anybody ever had someone who was a friend before in your life, yeah, have anybody, have, have you ever had a friend that you were close to? Raise your hand, everybody. On, on the emoji, give me an emoji hand, raise your hand. When you first met them, you did not know who, you, who they were. You did not. You went on a journey to get to know who they were, and then they became your best friend. What this prayer that we're saying right now is saying, hey, let's introduce you, let's introduce you to someone who cares so much about you. Repeat me. Here we go. You ready? Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross. Come on, everyone say it, especially you, workers. Say it with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Heavenly Father, I want a rich and thriving relationship with you. Jesus, I want you in my life. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. If you said that prayer, you are saved. No one can take that from you. Come on, no one can take that from you. Whether you're 80 years old, 18 years old, 18 years old or eight months years old, you're still human, right? 
You're just in a different season. That's what it is for some of you all. You just finally got here. You finally accepted Jesus. So guess what? If you make a mistake, don't be alarmed. If you have an attitude issue still, don't be alarmed. All the twists and turns and perversions in your life, they're not going to magically change. You've got to walk with Jesus for them to change. There's deliverance in every conversation. Now it's time to talk. So what I want you to do right now, if you're watching this right now, you said that prayer for the first time, there's nothing else you need to do. You can come back and see if we're online line still in a little bit, but I want you to go ahead and click right now that link. And I want you to go in that room, and we're going to talk to you about Jesus and introduce you to the steps you should take to make things better in your life. And if you're here right now, you said that for the first time, can you just wave your hand at me? I'm not going to have you do nothing weird. Just wave your hand. Anybody said that prayer for the first time in here? We just want to thank God for you. Anybody? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Anybody in here? Say that prayer for the first time. We're all good. How about this? Let's practice as if God brought teenagers in here and like 15 to 20 teenagers raise their hand. Come on. Yeah. Woo. So let's say it in faith to all those 15, 20 teenagers in the future who raise your hand. What you can, what right now, you workers are coming to you right now. They're going to give you instructions on how they want to pray with you and one of the spots in the gym. And they're going to circle you up and get to know you in the bleachers and share some more information about Jesus. All right. Amen. Cool. Now, everybody else is still in here. Let's do what God wants us to do on this revival night. Let's pray for the attitude issues we have. So if you have an attitude issue, I want you to make your way to the altar real quick. If God's been dealing with you about your emotions, getting that area of your life better, and you realize that tonight is the night for me to give that emotional place back to God, we're going to seek God's face when it comes to our attitude. Come on. Come on. You can line them up. You can line them up real quick. Line them up. We're going to pray regarding our attitude. Come on, youth workers, help me out here, please. Thank you, Lord God. Come on, line them up, line them up for me real quick. We're praying. God, we give you our, our hearts tonight. We give you our attitudes tonight. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm laying hands. I'm going to lay hands on them. I'm going to pray, pray with them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for attitudes. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch and agree with you. And for anybody who never may have never experienced this before, I'm going to lay hands on your head, and I'm going to pray for you, and we're going to download everything that God has for you. So just stretch your hands towards God right now. God, we give you our hearts, and we give you our minds. God, we pray right now in Jesus' name that the area of our life that's tough, the area of our life that's hard, the area of our life that, that's, that's, that's hard, that's hard to handle, Lord God, I pray right now, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you continue to just be there for us in those areas. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for strategy. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for strategy, God. I just thank you right now, God, that you continue to give her everything she needs, that place that of frustration. God, I even know there's specific things that have happened in her past, things that have happened in relationships that caused her to be hard in that area, but I think that you're breaking that right now tonight, that this revival is an opportunity for our heart to be refabricated, reconfigured. Oh God, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that it's breaking right now. Freedom for her, freedom in her emotions, God. We let it go because you're going to let it grow. We let it go because you're going to let it grow in Jesus' name. Thank you for these leaders, these upperclassmen, these 18-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 60-year-olds, thank you, Lord, that she, he is strong in the Lord. And right now, even things in his past that made him angry. God, oh, I see it right now. Things, Elijah, that people accuse you for that you actually did not do, but because you used to do other things, this one was like that. And this time, you wasn't really all wrong. You were actually right. But because we did so much wrong, I'm with you, Elijah. I'm with you by the Spirit, because I used to do the same thing. Because me and you used to do so wrong in our past, People assume that the new thing that came up, we did, but we didn't do it. God said, I'm breaking it right now. I'm breaking that hard place of being accused and everyone knowing your business. Oh, God, I heal it right now. Healing the flow right now in that area of accusation so that we can grow up and change our life and move on from that season. Thank you that he's able to move on. I speak of revival and relationships. God, I even see right now a conversation that you must have with your parents. I see it by spirit right now. It's a conversation coming, bro. You got to have it with your parents. You got to let them know that you change. You got to let them know that you're shifting. You got to let them know that you're growing up. You got to let them know that your mind's changing. You got to let them know that you're getting wisdom in. You got to let them know. You got to let them know. You got to let them know. Healing for those areas in his heart, God. Flow, Holy Spirit, tonight. Flow. Give these young people the revival that you call them to have. Not the adult revival. Not the revival that we think that looks like big church. Give us the revival that you want these young people to have. In Jesus' name, can I get some oil, please? God, I pray right now that you love these young people like this. So I anoint their attitudes. I anoint their emotions. I anoint the part of their hearts that hurt. Healing. If you're in the audience and you're not up here, it's okay. How about you just worship God right now? Because God wants to give you something while you're in the audience. 
Just worship God right now. Worship God, worship God, worship God, worship God. God, I pray right now in Jesus' name. God, areas of her life, areas of her life, she's already, she's already laid before you. She's already shifted into worship. Keep her protected. Keep that mindset protected in Jesus' name. That mindset of God, the mindset of strength. Thank you, Lord God, that she stays fit for you. Keep her attitude right. Keep my 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 attitude right. Keep it right, God. Because God, I anoint my attitude, God. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Can you lay hands on our heart real quick? God, I pray, God, for her heart. Thank you, Lord God. Angelica, lay hands on her heart. I pray for that place that's emotional. I protect. I call her emotions covered in the blood of Jesus. When she cries, there's a reason to cry. When she hurts, there's a reason to be hurt. We're not going to grow up and learn to manipulate people with our emotions. We're going to keep our attitude right. God, I thank you. I thank you for a new season. Oh, my God. A new season. 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 Thank you for a new season which means new places, new attitude, new glory, a new season. God, I thank you, Lord God, that she don't have to prove herself to nobody. You're going to rearrange.